Welcome back YouTube, I'm Ahmed again from In-Depth Tech Reviews and here is my fifth roundup for Google Apps updates. I'm gonna share with you all the new changes in Google Apps for the month of July but before getting started let's make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified every time I post a new video. So let's jump in. Now I will start with Gboard and if you are registered to the beta program of Gboard you will get some really cool features and the first one here is called emojis bar and if you see here at the top I have a bar that's showing me the most recent emojis I have and I can quickly tap on them instead of opening the emojis or the full list of emojis first and that's gonna save you some time also we'll get another button here if you still need access to all or, or the full list of your emojis you can tap on it and here you go you have the full list and you can also search as expected and also if you scroll all the way to the left you will get another button here called remove bar so if you are not happy to have this bar here you can simply tap on remove bar and it will jump straight away to the preferences showing you the toggle where you can turn it on or off. Also with the beta version of Gboard you will get access to Android 11 new set of emojis. Let's take a look here at the full list and when we scroll down you will see a lot of new emojis that we didn't see before. They are around 117 new emojis. Not only this but you will get also a small arrow at the bottom right corner indicating that they are expandable and when you tap on any of them it will give you different options from the same emoji, different haircuts, different gender, and also different skin tones. And that applies to any emoji that has a little icon or a little arrow at the bottom right corner. And I'm going to leave a link in the description below if you want to check the full list yourself. Next, Google Lens integration. Now when you tap on the three dots of your Gboard, you will see a new option here called Lens where you can tap it from here or you can drag it to your quick access bar. When you launch Google Lens from here, it will open the app and I'm going to use a business card to copy some text. So now I have the text ready so I can tap on it to copy. And you will see in this case a new option called send to keyboard. When you tap on send to keyboard, it will simply copy the text and paste it to the last application you were using. In this case, it was WhatsApp, so you can send it straight away. Keep in mind that this new option will not show up if you started Google Lens from a different app. For example, I have here a screenshot in Google Photos and I'm gonna tap on the lens icon, select some text. You will see here that I don't have an option called send to keyboard. It only works when you start Google Lens from the Gboard itself. Next, the new suggested stickers. When you tap on the emojis icon here to get the full list, you will see at the top here, it says tap a smiley to get stickers. When you tap any smiley here, it will give you all the stickers related to this smiley face that you can use instead of using the normal emoji. Finally, copying images. And as you may know, Gboard now has the ability to copy images. However, it wasn't working with Google Chrome. And if that's the case and you want to activate it on your phone, simply go to Chrome Flags using the URL at the top and look for something called Copy Image. Once you set it to Enabled, relaunch your Google Chrome, then you will be able to tap and hold on any image. It will give you the option to Copy Image. Then you will be able to paste it in the application you want. Next, the ability to set reminders directly from your notification shade based on the content of the message you received. For example, I've sent myself a message says, please buy milk. And because the message has a request, the phone is suggesting to set a reminder. And when I tap on this option, it will give me the choice between keep notes or tasks. Let's say I'm gonna go for keep notes. It will use the message as the subject for the reminder and then it will give me the ability to choose date, time, and location. I'm not sure if there is a specific app behind this feature or it's simply a server-side update. Next, Google Play Store. Now when you open the Play Store and then go to categories, you will see they look totally different. They have different icons and different colors. The next change is related to search. Let's say you are looking for an email app. Once you search for anything in the Play Store, now you will get filters at the top. And in my case here, I have Play Pass because I have a subscription. I have some rating filters, premium and new. Let's say I'm gonna choose Play Pass, also a rating with 4.5 plus, 
and to be a premium app. In this case, my search is refined to match exactly what I'm looking for. And if I want to clear a filter, I can tap on it again. And if I want to clear all the filters, I can tap on the X on the left hand side. Next, YouTube music. And the first change is under the now playing screen. Now you can swipe to the left and the right to change tracks. And under library, now you have a new section to show you the recently played songs or playlists. Next, the ability to see the playlists created by the band or the artist you are listening to. So for example, I'm gonna search for BTS here. And when I go to their page and then scroll down, you will see a new section called playlists. When you tap on it, here you will see each and every playlist they created on their page. And finally, I managed to transfer my Google Play Music library to YouTube Music. And I took a screen recording to show you the process. The first thing, you will get an email from YouTube Premium with a button here says transfer to YouTube Music. Once you click on this button, it will take you to a YouTube Music website and it will tell you what are the things that will transfer over to YouTube Music. Once you agree on this, just tap on the start transfer and wait a few seconds, it will show you the progress of each one. And in my case, as you see here, the whole video is 1 minute and 51 seconds. And after around 1 minute, I got a notification that the transfer is complete and the notification was from YouTube Music app. Once I opened the app, I found all the playlists and songs uh, I originally have in my Google Play Music transferred over and everything went seamlessly. Next, Google Docs, Sheets and the Slides now support dark theme. For example, if you go to Google Docs and then tap on the hamburger menu, then go to settings, now you will have a new option called the choose theme where you can choose dark, light or system default. Next, Google Chrome. And now Google Chrome beta support 64-bit and this is the first time ever for Google Chrome to work in 64-bit mode on any Android device. The stable version is only a 32-bit app. So if you want to take advantage of the new improvements in performance, simply search for Chrome beta in the Play Store and install it on your device. And the last update I have for you is related to Google Assistant. And now it will suggest for you certain actions based on your previous commands. For example, it says here in my case, you have asked for this before around this time, which is turning on my office lights. And that's why it's giving me a suggestion either to do it now by tapping on this button or don't suggest this anymore. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are the new changes in Google Apps I managed to get my hands on in July. Please let me know in the comments if you spotted any more changes. When it comes to the wallpaper, the download link will be in the description below. So I hope you like my video and if you do, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Thank you for watching.